His grit, his determination evident. Paul Gombor's dream being lived every day. Uh, he's a very good basketball player. He, he uh, plays with great intensity, but it just pales in comparison to the type of man he is. Uh, he's, he's one of the most amazing uh, men that I've ever coached. Man, the key phrase. Growing up quick, leaving home in Nigeria at age 16 for a better life. Encouraged by the parents who groomed him. Wanted more for him. When I see most of my teammate families coming down to the games, watching them play, I don't have nobody like that. Like, it makes me feel like I'm <clears throat> just left out. However, knowing, even though they don't see him playing, getting an education, making his parents prouder than he'll ever know. I'm the baby in my house. I'm more closer to my mom than anybody. So in late 2012, news from home hit Gambur hard. His mom suffering a stroke half a world away. I was down um, academically, basketball-wise and everything. You know, I had a meeting with my coach and he talked to me, trying to get me um, <clears throat> together to just go through the season. Then he asked me if I want to go home at that moment. Then I told him, I said, I don't think I want to go home because even if I go home, it's not like I'm going to go home to heal my mom. You know, so I just kept praying that God should just keep her alive till the summer. Prayers answered for Gambwer. He returned home to Nigeria after school finished and spent a full month with his mom. In July, he returned to school. Soon after, he placed a call to Barkley Radabaugh, the coach will never forget. Paul was just weeping on the phone, and um, I didn't have any idea what was wrong. Uh, and when he was able to tell me, he, uh, he, uh, he had lost his mom. She, she means everything to me. She's my world. She's my sunshine. She's my happiness. You know, and I'm sorry. I'm very drunk here, but yeah, she means everything to me. And knowing fully well that she's no more there for me to like talk to me, to advise me, to tell me what I need to do and what I don't need to do, it, it hurts me a lot. Upset and alone in North Charleston. And then we were able to, to get him home. Uh, we got him on a flight the next morning. There's an NCAA rule that allows you to pay for a flight if you lose a family member, and our university stepped up. With CSU's assist, he buried his mom, then rebounded. Gombor returned to CSU for this season, a new man, a changed man, even more of a man than he was, his new goal, not only to play, but to honor and remember. Whenever I get on the floor, I'm playing for my mom. No matter what happened, even if I play good or play, for, play bad, I'm just dedicating every game to my mom and just honor her for um, being my mom and giving birth to me and taking care of me for nine months. You know, he's just, a, he's just an incredible person who handled a very difficult situation just like we thought he would. Not a stretch to say San Nimli elated for the first day of practice. Most not excited about the two-a-days physical torture fatigue. Nimli will take every minute of it. It would mean the world. Um, it would mean the world to me. It would mean the world to my teammates, the seniors that came in here with my freshman year. Uh, and I know it mean the, the world to Coach Ray and, you know, everything he's done for me as a player. You know, I just want to, you know, do something for him, you know, leaving out here, at least make the tournament one time. To realize the journey, you have to go back to January. What seemed like a normal game day basketball injury changed at the doctor's office the next day. The, the first diagnosis was grim, uh, from 18 months to career over. My doctors told me I probably wouldn't be able to play again. Um, you know, I talked to my mom, you know, she cried. You know, I had a lot of emotions going through it, but, you know, I just uh, stuck with it, you know, kept my faith. Uh, my teammates behind me, my coaches were behind me. Going against the odds, nothing new for Nims. He's listed at 5'8". That's a stretch. Success in D1 college basketball, far from a stretch. An elite player in the Big South making his mark nationally. A bum knee certainly not going to hold him back. Just thinking about, you know, where, where do I go from there if I don't get to play basketball again? Um, so, you know, that, that was going through my head, you know, for the first about a month, you know, before the surgery until I finally found the doctor that told me that he could have me back. Um, but um, even at that, you know, I was still thinking, you know, it could be unsuccessful. Back on the court, but not his former self on it yet. His, his speed and quickness have, have dropped a little bit. He's still now quick. On a scale of 1 to 10, Saw was a 10 quickness-wise. For Saw Nimley, it's been a grind. It's been a scare. It's been a challenge. But for every challenge, the payoff from overcoming it, twice as nice. For San Nimley, that's a senior year of basketball. It's a miracle that he's out there. It's really just a miracle that he's out there. And um, 
we're just going to enjoy it every day and, and just pray he gets through the season and once he wants to go on and play professional basketball, and the doctors think he can do that. Not much this athlete of the week can't pull off. He's the big man in the middle for the Bulldogs. P.J. Horgan helping turn this team around back towards relevancy in the Southern Conference. He's enjoying himself out there. He's, he's not as stressed or he's not as, as the world is on his shoulders type of uh, player. But a year ago, this outcome was anything but expected. Horgan in the headlines, not for play on the court. Last year, there was a time where I thought my basketball career was just over. You know, I didn't know what to do. I was seeing doctors every other week trying to figure it out. You know, he hung in there. He just uh, kept doing whatever he could. And then thank, I'm, I'm really happy for him that he's got the opportunity to, to finish out his career and, and get back on the court. A herniated disc. PJ unable to sit, let alone play basketball. On like road trips, I had to like lay flat on the bus or I had to stand up in class and take notes. Um, and it, it just took like oh, almost a year of rehab. And a year later, the big man, a big asset for the Bulldogs. Second in scoring on this team, 14 points per game, averaging nearly seven rebounds per contest. A defensive-minded, do-it-all senior leader on this squad. There was never a point where I wasn't going to try and come back, um, except when the doctor kind of said, you know, you're not going to play anymore. So, okay, but I mean, as soon as he told me I could, you know, I was just going right back at it. But that back's still an issue. PJ says he's in daily treatment sessions that last an hour and a half. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Wouldn't trade it for anything. In Charleston, Darren Stoltz with Sports 4.